Hey friends! Today's video is going to be your monthly ASI haul and it is that time when I get to roast some product releases and talk about why I don't need them and why I'm not going to buy them. So this video series was made popular by Kimberly Clark here on YouTube. I will leave a link to her videos up in the uh, card and in the description. So you should go check out her videos because she's the OG and has said so many good things in her videos that are still relevant, even though the videos are kind of old. Today we're gonna be talking about some new product releases, things that have hit the internet in the last month or so. I had some people send me some things that they thought I should talk about. Thankfully, pretty much everything you guys sent me, I already had on my list and I was like, cool, we're we're on the same page. Also like, I hate how hot it is, but like my skin looks great right now. So like, we're gonna film two videos with it. In case, also in case anybody's wondering, this is uh, Dale Cooper from Twin Peaks behind me. I've had some people wonder what that is. Oh, uh, so first things first, let's talk about these Fenty cream products. Now, this is going to be an unpopular opinion because I've seen so many people get so excited about it, review it, love it. I am not saying that these products are bad. I am saying that these products are not things that I would use really at all. Time and time again, I buy cream products that I never finish. While I do love that she made the blushes smaller because for somebody like me who doesn't use up cream products, you'd be more likely to use up something like that. And the colors are really bright. I Samantha Ravendahl did like a full review of them. Raw Beauty Christie did a full review of them. And they're probably, they're not bad. Like they're not bad products. But for me, I know that I would never use any of those blushes, those cream blushes and the cream bronzers, the contour stick I might use, but I have an ABH one that I, that I like and I just would not get any use out of these because I just don't gravitate towards cream products. And I w I'm beating a dead horse every time I say that because I feel like I mentioned I don't use cream products. I just don't like how they look on my skin and I don't like how they wear on my skin. I feel like they wear off too quickly if I'm going to do my face of makeup, I want it to last longer. And for me, creams just come off because I use a lot of emollient products in my skincare. So I feel like when I use too many emollient things on top, it just like slides away. So yeah, I don't need any of these Fenty cream blushes or cream bronzers because I literally won't use them. Like I will not finish them. I don't use cream blushes. I have like the Glossier ones that, that are it, that are in the little tubes that I like more. I like the squeezy tubes better than like cream blushes that are in a pan. It's just like not as sanitary. It just gets a little gross faster. I prefer cream products in a squeezy tube versus a pan personally, if I'm going to use cream products. So I don't need it and I'm not going to buy it. Next. Um, oh boy. So Huda Beauty. <laughs> What are these hydrating lip balms? There's so many different lip products that have hit the market in the last month. There's like a Charlotte Tilbury, like $40 lip oil, which is like, wow. Diamond hydrating lip balms. They look like they have glitter on them. Gold crushed diamond sparkle. I don't know if these images are deceiving, but they look like they are just overpriced lip balms that are not even gonna be that good. I never like lip balms that come in like a lipstick type tube. I feel like they're always too waxy. They're never long lasting enough. They're never moisturizing enough. So this just feels like a bougie line. I'm gonna put on my diamond crusted lip balm. Like how bougie is that? That doesn't seem like it would be useful at all. My lip balms that I use are like Blistex that I've been using for my whole life. Looking for new ones, by the way. Lano Lips and then I have a Bite Beauty one. Those are my lip balms. <laughs> These seem so pointless. And like even in the images too, like it's clear they're not just wearing that lip balm in some of the images. Like it's clear that they have lip colors on and I'm just like, why? Why does anybody need this? I don't need this. Why does anybody need this? It's a, po it's so pointless. It's so pointless. It's pretty for the sake of being pretty. You're not going anywhere to impress anybody. So it's not like you're going out to like a bar and like you're gonna put on your diamond crusted lip balm. Like who's gonna be, imp are you gonna impress your cat? No, I feel like this is just like bougie and pointless. Not, not digging it. Don't need it. Not gonna buy it. Oh my gosh. So Pat McGrath, Pat McGrath, I own lip glosses from Pat McGrath. I don't own anything else from Pat McGrath. I feel like her palettes are largely overpriced for what I want to spend on an eyeshadow palette. She's re-releasing the Mothership 4, which was the Star Wars one. The Star Wars palette was the Mothership 4. Like that's what it was. They're re-releasing it. Um, still $125. Looking at this palette again, like it, when it first came out, I was like, ooh, that's really pretty. But looking at the swatches, these are all shimmer shades and it's like a full paint of toppers, 
full pan of pops. If I'm gonna spend $125 on an eyeshadow palette, which I would never do personally, but if I'm gonna do that, I would want to be able to get an entire look out of that. And this doesn't seem like a cohesive color story, even with all the shimmers. Like if it was all shimmers, but at least they like related to each other in some way, these just seem like a disjointed palette of pops. Like I said, it's, it's not a complete look. This would be something that you would bring in for maybe a couple of colors and then have to use another palette, like to get a complete look. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't make sense. There's like maybe like a couple, like three or four color ish stories, but it doesn't really track, you know, like it just doesn't seem like something that you'd be able to get an entire look out of. To spend $125 on a palette that you would inevitably have to bring in another palette for, that's not a, that's not cool. I don't want that. If we're talking like four pans, that's one thing, but an entire 10 pan palette of pops, not a fan. Don't need it, not gonna buy it. KBD Vegan Discovery Beauty Friendship. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what it stands for anymore. This is such a weird release. I actually saw the other day that apparently Sephora's emails are still saying Kat Von D in like the verbiage mailing list emails, which is like, come on Sephora, get your, get your shit together. But they released this four pan palette, which is kind of falling in again, the shade and light eyeshadow palette thing, which clearly again, they're just trying to use up packaging because I never really quite got this like three small, one large quad thing, but the name also doesn't make any sense. Like already we have KVD vegan beauty discovery friendship, love, laugh, live, I don't know. But the palette is named Kitten Mini New Pop. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Super disjointed. There's like a matte, camel color. They call it a holographic pink opal, which is probably just going to be similar to the pinky kind of duochrome from the subculture palette. And then there's a grape shimmer. I like, I hate when they say like grape. It's like, it's purple. Okay. It's a purple shimmer. And then a matte fiery persimmon. It's red. I hate when they like give these, these like fancy names. Matte latte, holographic pink opal, grape glimmer, and matte fiery persimmon. Like don't make it fancy for the sake of making it sound better than what it actually is because it's just like a super just disjointed thing that doesn't make any sense. And it honestly, this looks like something where they had pans from other palettes that they needed to recycle and then just slap in a palette, which if they wanted to do that, just release singles. They could literally just take the singles and release them as singles and that would be fine. The shade and light formula is good. So why are they just like shoving them in these weird quads that are just like something that n d doesn't make any sense? Like you, I, again, what kind of cohesion is this? There is none. I don't need this and I'm not going to buy it. Sorry, KVD, vegan, lift, laugh, love, discovery, friendship. I don't, I don't fucking know. Next. <sighs> Next, <laughs> Glam Light. I've talked about Glam Light in the past and I'm not a huge fan of their shtick in general. I'm not a fan of like the food giant palettes. They have like the taco one and the pizza one. They have this ice cream one, which is like the most annoying shape for a palette I have ever seen. Besides the one that was in the shape of a gun, but we won't even get into that. That wasn't Glam Light, by the way, that was another indie brand. Some brights and then some neutrals that are not even cohesive for ice cream color story. It's like it's the same colors over and over again, just with different shaped packaging. So if you have one Glam Light palette, if you like this shtick and it's like, you're just buying it for the shape, for like the gimmick of it. I don't see that these colors are anything super revolutionary within their own line. I feel like there's a lot of repeat shades from palette to palette. And then they have like the donut one that's coming out, which isn't even like flat. It's like squishy. Not gonna lie, it's cute, but like make it as a clutch. The donut would be a really cute makeup bag. Glam Light, make the donut makeup bag. So waste of space packaging, over the top wasted, wasted packaging. Their entire line is based on wasted space in packaging. And I'm not a fan personally. Don't need it, not gonna buy it. I don't understand these like, this need to make palettes in the weirdest shapes possible that like are gonna be the most annoying things to store. And I don't see people using it. I see it just being a gimmick and then you like use it in Instagram photos and then it's just like, oh, this is fun and cute. Like I don't see people using this in a day-to-day -day scenario, you know? Don't need it. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Apologies, my computer just 
So? On the floor. So if like the framing is a little off, it's because my computer fell on the floor. My upper lip is sweating. Next. Next, we're going to talk briefly about this concealer from Kimchi Cosmetics. I will say, as far as shade range, this is decent for an indie brand like Kimchi. However, the undertones are so bizarre. <laughs> I feel like I needed to mention it and I needed to talk about it just a little bit because it's like, what are these undertones? The deep ones are so gray, at least in the photos that I'm seeing, the deep tones are very, very gray. And there's one that's like straight up like orange. There's ones that are very, very pink. There's like no true neutral things. The undertones are very weird. And I don't know if that's just the initial photos that have come out, but I really hope it is. And I really hope it's the lighting because otherwise who are these concealers going to match? I don't need them. I'm not gonna buy them because I have a concealer that I like from Cover Effects. I'm not somebody who likes to own a lot of things of complexion products because I like to finish them and then just buy a new one. Don't need it, not gonna buy it. Sorry, Kimchi. I really, I really wanna support your brand. I really wanna try stuff, but like the packaging's very cute though. I like the packaging a lot. I, my upper lip is sweating. Next, okay, Benefit, why? Benefit already brought us the worst shade range we've seen in a while for a foundation, but then they decided it would be a good idea to also accompany that terrible shade range with a beauty blender that they just slapped their own name on. Benefit, you're not doing anything new, okay? Stop, <laughs> stop it. What are they doing? Oh, I'm, I have a video planned where I'm just like brands that desperately need a redesign and I'm going to redesign their logos. It's gonna be amazing, okay? That's coming in the next couple of weeks. I just need like, if there's any that you know that you desperately would like to redesign, if you would like me to fiddle with the branding, leave it in the comments. This is, it, it's the same color as Beauty Blender and the same shape as Beauty Blender. Nobody owns the idea of a beauty sponge, but at least other sponges, other brands that have come out with beauty sponges, they've like changed the shape a little bit or they haven't done pink as the main color. It's literally like Benefit took a beauty blender and then just engraved their own name. I don't get it. I literally don't get it. Like I do not understand Benefit as a brand and that's clear. You guys have heard me rag on Benefit time and time again, so. I just needed to include them in this one too. A brand that I haven't seen actually much of anything from is ColourPop lately. Oh my God, ColourPop's not included in an anti-haul? A second one in a row? <gasps> ColourPop, have you changed up your act? Or is just everything you've put out so boring that it's not even worth talking about? I don't know. Maybe because they're not shipping anything out right now. Which like props to ColourPop, okay? Props to ColourPop. Like I ordered something from them like before all this happened, like right when it started and I still haven't gotten it because they're like, we're not sending stuff out. And I was like, good job ColourPop, thank you. So. Glossier, oh my God. Glossier, I love as a brand so much. They came out with this supercharged moisture or hand cream, supercharged moisture in a palm sized pod with sleek curves and 360 squeeze packaging. You know, if you had 360, it's just a squeezy tube. The way that they're making this sound is like this new revolutionary, like squeezy tube. It's like, it's not that revolutionary. And it also seems like very wasteful as far as like packaging go. Honestly, it looks like a giant floss dispenser for a hand cream. Meadow foam seed oil and coconut fruit extract uses a second skin matrix. I hate when brands come up with like fancy terms for just like ingredients. A second skin matrix. What is it? Is it Vaseline? Is it hyaluronic acid? Like, what is it? I don't understand when they come up with these like fancy names just to like make something that's very basic sound extra bougie and like scientific. It's like, I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? What is a second second skin matrix? And it's $18 for a hand cream. And I will admit, I am a person who buys skincare that is expensive. Like I buy Lush things all the time. Lush products, you can actually recycle the pots. Highly recommend. But I like squeezy tubes. I do like squeezy tube. That's the one thing that annoys me about Lush things is that they don't have squeezy tubes, but they do it for good reason because they can recycle the plastic. So this seems like wasteful packaging. It's cute and I want it, but I don't need it. I have hand creams. I have so many hand creams. The last thing that Abby needs is hand creams right now. Don't need it, not gonna buy it. Okay. Next, let's talk about, I feel like I could make an entire video about like this uptick in like CBD ingredient 
in stuff. And like when it started, I don't really have a problem with the idea of using sativa seed oil and things and using stuff in it. But something about with these skincare brands kind of jumping on the CBD and jumping on the weed train, it clearly is just like a cash grab and it's a, a marketing ploy. But sometimes when I see things that are like, when they say that there's so much CBD in it, but then like the price is still pretty low, it's like weed is expensive. Like it's not cheap. If you go to a dispensary and you want to buy like body oil that is like CBD in it, it's expensive. So like seeing skincare brands use, I don't know, some, whatever kind of CBD, it's, it's a very interesting and like complex industry. And so I don't necessarily trust skincare brands to be using marijuana and be using cannabis in a way that's like super effective for the skin, because like, that's not what they do. Do. I don't need any like pure has a hey CBD mist and then like a, a t tinted lip balm. What the hell is CBD facial mist going to do? Literally nothing. Yeah, I don't need anything. I don't need any of that right now. I'm just like, like Milani has stuff. Makeup Revolution has stuff. Yeah, I don't need any of the CBD stuff that's come out on the market lately. Cause it's just like skincare brands just like jumping on a train. I'm not a fan of, not a fan, not a fan. <laughs> Next, we're gonna talk about NARS. Now, NARS is a brand that I used to use. I still have some products from them. I used to love NARS. Then they started selling in China, so they were no longer cruelty-free. And now, literally everything that NARS has come out with has been orgasm-themed. If I'm gonna rag on Kat Von D about using Lolita for everything, and we're gonna rag on Benefit for using Hula for everything, rag on Too Faced for doing Peach everything, we gotta rag on NARS for having everything-themed orgasm. Like, there's this eyeshadow palette. It's a quad, a new addition to the orgasm family. It's a quad eyeshadow palette for $52. A $52 eyeshadow palette with like basic pinky peaches and then variations of it is just so extra and pointless. Dude, like NARS, NARS has good complexion products. I do not use them, but like their concealer is one of the best concealers I've ever used, but I do not buy it because it's too expensive and they're not cruelty free. So NARS needs to focus on that. And now they're just like literally just throwing more things with the orgasm name on it. And I'm like, it's not gimmicky anymore, y'all. It's not kitschy. It's not like, ew, look, it's a suggestive name. Nobody cares anymore. It lost its luster, which is another, <laughs> another blush from NARS. I'm so bored with it. And I feel like everybody is bored with it. I literally, I never see people talk about NARS. And I think it's because they've just gotten really stale. Sorry, not sorry. Don't need to not gonna buy it. Are we almost done? Now we're gonna talk about ABH. Me, like a couple of my friends, I love ABH. I love ABH. I have more ABH eyeshadow palettes than any other eyeshadow, any other brand in my entire collection. I love ABH eyeshadow palette. I don't own any of the Norvina ones, the big ones. I own the original Norvina, which is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes, the original like 14 pan one that was like, came out a couple years ago. I love that palette. I love it so much, but I'll start with the cake liners because there's these water activated cake liner shades, which is like just not a good use of space and not a good way to package things. Cause I feel like it's like messy, it breaks easily. It's not easy to like store. So the packaging bothers me, but it also comes in a trio. So it's like, you can't even buy just one. And I feel like these colors are so intense that like, what if you wanted to just buy one? Like each trio is $30. So it's like $10 per thing. It's not the worst price. Like it's not the most expensive thing in the world. I will say that. But like, I hate things that are sold immediately as trios when that trio of things are not like automatically something that goes together, you know? Like a trio of like blush highlight bronzer makes sense. A trio of bright neon pink, bright neon yellow, and neon blue cake liners. I don't need that. I wish that they were selling them as singles because I feel like that would be a much better idea. It was kind of like when Fenty came out with the, the liners. It's like, why, why are brands coming out with trios of liners? <laughs> and the packaging does bother me. I'm not a fan of the packaging. So I'm sorry, ABH. I don't need it. I'm not going to buy it. Just come out with more regular palettes. Like I want, the, I want. Last but not least, and something that I know, I had so many people tag me in this. So many people tag me in this. And so many people like, oh my God, you have to talk about this. At first glance, 
This palette is fucking beautiful. Uh, on first glance, when I saw it, I was like, oh shit, is this gonna be the first one that I bought? Like, I wanted it. I did. It's very appealing to the eye. It's very pretty. It's very just like pretty to look at. And then the longer that I looked at it, the more I was like pinks and purples, kind of neutrals, that pop of like a lime yellow green, and then some shimmers in there, but so many neutrals, so many neutrals, and just like repeat things. Like there's repeat shades from the other Norvina palettes. There's repeat shades from things in the actual ABH palettes. Like this looks like they took the Norvina palette initially and then like threw in some hot pinks and then that hot yellow, but everything else is something that I have from ABH already. While this is beautiful, I like, I saw this, I was like, do I want this? I, d I, I wanted it, I do want it. The longer that I look at it and the more that I look at it, the more I realize that I don't use big palettes and I do not need to spend $60 on a large palette that is going to sit in my drawer and not get used that much because I have so many other ABH palettes. I want blushes from ABH, I want, or highlighters. Come out with the Omrizi highlighter in other shades, like the Omrizi formula, like that's what we want. And that's, I feel like what people want. And I feel like these are just like, I don't wanna say self-indulgent, but they seem kind of self-indulgent for Norvina. I'm not saying that it's gonna be a bad product. It's probably really good quality, but like, I don't need it. I really don't, I don't need this. <laughs> It looks like they took the Bryce from the Prism palette, the Norvina palette, and then took out all the dark shades. Cause there's really not any like dark shades in here either. So there's not a whole lot of depth you can get in it. It's just very neutral and I don't need it and I'm not gonna buy it. And if I have the time, I'll rearrange them in, in a photo here. Cause I did that with the first three palettes. I rearranged them in a, in a way that made more sense to me visually um, because this is very, it's a very neutral palette, but it's why it's pretty. Mixing colors with neutrals is something that is like visually appealing to the eye. So I get it and I get why they did it, but it's not something that I need because I have so many of these shades, so many of this already, and I don't use large palettes. If this was half the size, I might've bought it but I don't use large palettes. I just don't. And I'm not going to, and I'm sorry. I don't need it and I'm not going to buy it. I'm sorry. It's so pretty, but I, do, I literally don't need this. Like I need to stop looking at it because it's so pretty, but I don't need it. So that's everything. There's not, there hasn't been a ton of stuff that's come out recently. I will say that it has been kind of quiet. I'm glad that it's been quiet and I'm glad that brands have not come out with like so much stuff. We had a lot of 420 themed things because people probably already had them planned. Uh, so if there are any other things that you have been anti-hauling that you've seen that you might want, but you don't need to buy, any things that you might think other people don't need, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for supporting me continuously on my anti-haul series. I really, really appreciate it. It's something that I like doing and it's something I'm going to keep doing. And it's really fun. It's really fun. I will say, if you like these brands, if you like these products, do not take this personally because I'm talking about the products and not you. These are just my opinions about the products, not necessarily the brands, unless I specify otherwise. So if you like these, that's great. If you bought these, that's awesome. If you like them and if you get good use out of it and you enjoy it, that's fantastic. This is just for me, for not wanting to just like spend unnecessary money and for anybody else who might need a little bit of that, like just pep talk to not give in to marketing and stuff. So this was for you, this was for me. Please don't be offended in the comments because I'm talking about products. <laughs> For today's song of the day, let's see. My upper lip is just sweating. Oh my God. Today's song of the day is Basil Shabazz by Fauna Shade. This is an old Fauna Shade track from like several years ago, but it's like a fun, loud, dancey thing if you wanna just like kind of dance and rage. Um, love those guys, I miss them so much. But yeah, Basil Shabazz by Fauna Shade is your song of the day. Everything on my face will be in the description if you're wondering. Thanks so much to my patrons. As always, I appreciate you so, so much. If you like this video and you would like me to keep making anti-hauls, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel and would like to see more of my videos, including my anti-hauls, link in a card, um, please subscribe. Uh, I post these once a month as well as like a ton of other videos, <laughs> three times a week. So you'll get consistent content if you subscribe <laughs> and hopefully you like it. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I will see you all on Saturday. Bye.